In this video, I convinced this guy to start his very own box truck business. I've been running my business for over a year now. I've learned a lot of good ways to do things. I've learned a lot of bad ways to do things. For example, I teach him all about what it means to be a dispatcher, how to dispatch your own loads, how to work with brokers. Do I need a factoring company? I try to tell him the best place to get a box truck, what to look for, what type of engine to get. I basically shared all of the secrets, all the knowledge I've learned over the past year operating my actual box truck business with this guy. If you want to schedule a consultation just like he did and talk to me for 30 minutes or for one hour, the link is in the description below. I'll answer any questions you have, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, watch the rest of my videos, and good luck starting and growing your box truck business. Don't wanna sleep in, cause I got something to prove. I gotta take what I hate and finally make a move. I think of you and Hey, this is Zach Pascarello. Yeah, is this still a good time to talk? Let's do it. What kind of questions do you have? What's my advice for someone just starting a box truck business? First of all, are you gonna be driving or are you hiring someone else to drive? The first thing I would say is make sure you have twenty thousand dollars ready to spend. For a couple things, the down payment of the truck, you're gonna to have to spend 20 percent on the truck and your insurance down payment is probably gonna be two to four thousand dollars and you never know what kind of repairs and maintenance you're gonna to have to spend in the first couple months driving your truck. So it's always safe, you know, at least ten thousand if not twenty thousand dollars to get started. And then yeah, my next biggest piece of advice, apart from having twenty thousand dollars cash, is buy the best truck you possibly can. Don't try to go cheap. Don't try to find something for $10,000. I understand that box trucks are really overpriced right now, but you still want to get as new and as good of a truck as you financially possibly can. So I don't know how much money you're looking to spend on a down payment. And I know trucks are like sixty, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 right now, but if you really want to get a box truck, if you really want to start the business and you really want to be successful long term, you gotta invest in a good truck. And the third piece of advice that I would give anybody looking to start a box truck business, if you don't wanna drive, I recommend don't get a box truck. Get a tractor trailer. If, if you don't wanna drive, if you truly wanna start a trucking business, if you truly wanna get, you know, two or three trucks and just kind of run a trucking business, then you will be able to make so much more money and it'll actually be easier to run a tractor trailer business than it is to run a box truck business. The only reason I ever tell anybody to start a box truck business is if they want to drive 100% of the time long term. But I know you said you only want to drive for the first month, maybe two months and then hire a driver. It's pretty difficult to make a lot of money if you're hiring a driver for the box truck. Why can't you make a lot of money with a box truck? Because they, the loads don't pay as much. They only pay $2 a mile, and diesel is still just as expensive in a box truck as it is in a tractor trailer. The miles per gallon isn't really all that much better in a box truck, so you're basically spending just as much in diesel. And I mean, from a labor perspective, like you're paying a CDL driver maybe 60 cents per mile and you're still paying a box truck driver like 45 cents a mile. So, I mean that's 20, 30% less that you can save on labor, but you're going to you're going to be able to make so much more money. So, a CDL truck load is going to pay you $3 a mile. A box truck load is only paying 2 bucks a mile. So, the revenue potential for a CDL truck is just it's 50% greater than it is for a box truck. The only, like, like I said, the only reason I ever tell anybody to start a box truck business is if they want to drive. Because obviously, if you don't have your CDL right now, like, it's going to take you several months to get your CDL. So if you want to start a business right now, if you don't want to get your CDL, your only option is to start a box truck, start a box truck business. But if you plan on hiring drivers, I mean, so, and you know, maybe you'll have better luck than I did, but just for my example, I was only making like 200 bucks a week with, with the box truck. Net profit after I paid my driver and after I paid for fuel and you know, after all the expenses, 200, maybe $400 a week if I was lucky. And so if your plan is to, if this is just gonna be like your, your main business, you're gonna struggle um, with a box truck. And now keep in mind, I hired a dispatcher. So I was paying my dispatcher 500 bucks a week. So if you plan on dispatching your own truck, you could maybe make 500 bucks plus, you know, two, maybe $400 a week. So you have the potential to make between 700 and $900 a week if you dispatch your own box truck. But 
I mean, you could do the exact same thing with a CDL truck and you can make 50% more money. And it's so much easier to dispatch a CDL truck compared to a box truck. And, and I mean, I don't want to spend the whole time, you know, trying to convince you not to buy a tractor trailer. So if you are set on buying a box truck, if you're set on buying a box truck, then we can focus on that. But I just wanted to throw out my two cents and my opinion on CDL tractor versus box truck. So if you want, we can focus on the box truck business moving forward if you're set on that. I used a staffing agency to get my CDL driver. So that is one big difference. It is much more difficult to find a CDL driver than it is to find a box truck driver. So if you have you know, family, friends, coworkers, you know that would be interested in, in driving a box truck, maybe it would be a good idea for you to get a couple box trucks and put people in the trucks because it doesn't require a special CDL license. So you can take anybody off the street as long as they have a driver's license and as long as they're able to pass a DOT medical physical, then they can drive your box truck for you. So that is one, one of the benefits of a box truck business versus a CDL trucking business. Whenever your authority is new, brokers are less likely to work with you. Everyone knows that and yeah, I talk about it in my videos, but it's not impossible. Whenever I first got my authority back in 2021, I was able to book loads with brokers and my authority was brand new. I was limited. I wasn't able to work with all the brokers, but I was still able to work with brokers other than Amazon Relay. But Amazon Relay is a really good place to start for your first 30 days because they work with you. The rates are the same no matter how old your authority is and you, you can work with them right from day one. But Amazon Relay is not a long-term solution because there's a lot of limiting factors when it comes to Amazon Relay. You're not gonna get the miles and the distance and the loads aren't everywhere and they only go to certain post offices and certain warehouses. And it depends on where you're located, but like for the longest time, I'm in central Pennsylvania and there wasn't even an Amazon warehouse within 50 miles of my location that I could even do Amazon Relay. So it depends on where you're located if you wanna do Amazon Relay or not but all you need is a subscription to the DAT load board and you can start looking up loads as soon as you get your authority. As soon as you sign up with a DAT load board, you can start looking for loads, you can start calling brokers and you can start you know, working today. As long as you have a truck and an authority and insurance and a W-9, you can start working. It's gonna require two to four hours every single day for you to book your loads. So I just wanna, I just always throw that out there that way you can Keep that into perspective for the amount of time it's going to take for you to dispatch your own truck, especially as a box truck, especially in the beginning. It's going to take two to four hours, but it's not impossible. You, If you want, you, you can never work with Amazon Relay and you'll be fine. I didn't work with Amazon Relay for the first six months. I was just booking loads straight from the DAT load board. And it's, it's easy because you're going to have plenty of time. If you're the one driving your truck, whenever you get to the shipper, you're going to be waiting probably for an hour, if not two hours, for the shipper to load your truck. So I would recommend, you know, get a laptop, get a tablet, and have it in your truck. When, whenever you pull up to the shipper, whenever you park your truck, Hop on, the, hop on the DAT load board and start looking at loads for, your, for tomorrow, for the next day. Start booking your loads in advance. And then you, know, you drive you know, 10, 11 hours that day and you, get, and you get to your hotel or you get to wherever you're stopping, spend a couple hours booking loads on the DAT load board. And then you get to the receiver the next day, all of a sudden you got two more hours. So there's gonna be time during the day in between driving whenever you can dispatch yourself, whenever you can book your own loads. And you're gonna pay a dispatcher 10% to dispatch these loads for you. So if you're gonna drive, if you're gonna try to save money, I would recommend don't hire a dispatcher, just get a DAT subscription, just try to dispatch your truck on your own. You'll save 10% and you'll have plenty of time to do it and brokers will work with you even in the first 30 days. You can get CDL and box truck loads on the DAT load board. They have loads for everything. Yeah, so think Amazon Relay is really just a broker. They're just, Amazon Relay just has like an in-house broker and they're brokering out their own freight. But you can work with other brokers directly. That's actually what I recommend you do. So in the beginning, you're gonna need a DAT subscription and you're gonna get your loads off the DAT load board. But once your authority gets a little bit older, you can work directly with brokers like XPO Logistics, CH Robinson, Henry, Yellow Dime. Like there's a thousand different brokers out there, but a lot of these brokers actually have their own load board. So that's, that's all DAT is, is a load board. That's all Amazon Relay is, it's a load board. These, these loads that need to be moved are posted on these load boards and you go there and you can search and filter through distance and location and, and weight and length. You can find different loads on these load boards, but a lot of brokers 
have their own load board. Like CH Robinson, you can get a username and password and log in directly to CH Robinson's website. And there, that's where the best loads are posted because a lot of the loads that they can't get booked directly off of their load board, the bad loads, they'll throw up on the DAT load board. So I actually recommend, you're gonna have to use the DAT load board in the very beginning, but after your first 30, 60 days, try to get away from the DAT load board and just work directly with brokers. And as you start moving freight for other brokers, you'll build those relationships and they'll be calling you, you'll have a relationship with them, e email, phone calls, and you'll be able to work directly with other brokers outside of the DAT load board. Okay, so do you already have your LLC? EIN, business checking account, business credit card, I recommend, what'd you say? Yeah, yeah, you're gonna wanna connect your business checking account with your with your business credit cards, yeah. Easy pass, are you, what region of the country are you in? Sorry, wh where are you? Oh, okay. Um, do you have a lot of toll roads? Do you plan on, do you plan on driving your truck like all over the country or do you plan on staying locally? You're gonna need to get a DOT medical physical. And, and you can't just go to your family doctor or CVS or Rite Aid. You have to go to a special doctor who is registered with the Department of Transportation and, and who is able to administer a DOT physical. It's gonna cost you probably $80, but just, just do, do a quick Google search and look up DOT medical physical and just call around and ask the doctor specifically if they're able to do a DOT medical physical. If they know what you're talking about, then, then they're probably registered with the DOT. But you're gonna need to get that done. It's a very basic physical. They just check your eyes and your blood pressure and your reflexes, very basic. And then I always tell people it's going to take longer than you think to get your truck. For me, it took 30 days from the day I called the dealership and said, hey, I wanna buy this truck. It literally took 30 days until I had the keys and I was walking out with the truck. That's because the truck might be on the other side of the state and they might have to move it to the local dealership where you are. There's gonna be an, like a state and a DOT inspection and so they might find something wrong with the truck and they have to fix it. As you know, you know, parts, truck parts are hard to find nowadays. So they might have to wait several days to get a missing part. Just always anticipate it taking longer than you think to get your truck. The, the whole process typically takes 30 days until you actually have your truck. Um, so just keep that in mind whenever you're looking. And ha have you have you looked at other places? Do you know where you're gonna get your truck or have you been looking online or local dealerships? Yeah, so Penske and Ryder, they obviously sell box trucks, but the trucks they sell have a lot of miles and they're a little overpriced in my opinion. If I were you, I would try to find a local dealership. Facebook Marketplace is actually a really good place. To find a box truck and just look at local dealerships. Try to find something like newer than 2016 if you can and less than 300,000 miles. So try to get something, rel it doesn't have to be brand new, but just relatively new. You don't wanna get like a 2010 truck with half a million miles on it. it you're gonna spend a lot in maintenance. So try to get a new-ish truck with, with low mileage. Yeah, I, I, have, I have an International 4300. That's a popular box truck. Freightliner M2 is another popular box truck. The Ford F650 Freightliner M2. That's like the most popular truck that I've heard of, the Freightliner M2. It's gonna be more expensive than the International 4300, but I've heard Freightliner, International or Freightliner, I don't think it matters. The only thing I, ma I think it matters is that you stay away from the Max Force engine. So if you get a Cummins engine or a Detroit engine, I think, or a Duramax engine, I think you'll be fine with the engine. Just stay away from Max Force engine. And, and you'll be fine. You want to make sure it's 26 feet, the box, first and foremost, absolutely nothing less than 26 feet. You want to make sure it has a lift gate and you want to check the height of the box. The, the taller the box, the better. If you can find a box that's greater than 100 inches tall, that's really, really good. But you know, 94, 96 inches, eight feet tall is, is pretty standard. D try not to get anything shorter than eight feet tall. You're gonna need an electronic logging device, an ELD. And it's gonna take two to three weeks for the ELD to come in the mail. So as soon as you find out what kind of truck you want and you're gonna get, order your ELD right away. All you need to know is the VIN number of the truck and then you can contact your electronic logging device company, give them the VIN number and they'll give you the correct cable needed to hook up. And if you don't know what an ELD is, it just makes sure you're compliant with your hours of service because you can only drive 11 hours a day. You can only work 14 hours a day. So the electronic logging device tracks how many how many hours you drive and how many hours you're working. 
And if you ever get pulled over for a DOT inspection, they're gonna ask for your logbook. And so you 100% you need an ELD unless you're operating less than 150 miles from your, your business. So if you're only doing local deliveries, you know, 50, 100 miles away from your, your business, then you don't technically need an ELD. But if you're gonna be going further away than 150 miles, you need an ELD. Right. And then you're probably gonna need to get a factoring company. Brokers don't pay, brokers pay in 30 days. So you're gonna be making $5,000 a week. So for the first 28 days, you're gonna have made $20,000, but you won't receive any of it. So a factoring company pays you in immediately for your invoices. So, you know, if you work for XYZ company today and you know you drive 500 miles, they owe you $1,000, you submit your invoice, they won't pay you until 30 days later. But what you do instead is you sign up with a factoring company, you submit your paperwork directly to the factoring company, they pay you $1,000 minus their 3% fee today, and then 30 days later, the broker pays the factoring company. So you'll need a factoring company unless you have $20,000 extra to help cash flow your business. Yeah, I can send you a point of contact for the factoring company. Yep, I'll do that too. You're always gonna have to load your own truck. Don't ever let a, a forklift go into your truck. You're gonna need to get a pallet jack. They cost like 300 bucks. You're gonna need to get a pallet jack and you're gonna need to load your truck yourself. I also recommend find a good diesel mechanic. Find a good diesel mechanic close to your house and have them inspect the truck before you start working. So it's, it's best to have them inspect the truck before you even buy it if that's an option, but at the very least, have them inspect your truck before you start working. Don't trust the dealership, don't trust the private seller. Always always find a good diesel mechanic, first of all, build a good relationship with the diesel mechanic, and then have him check over your truck on a, on a routine basis. You're gonna need to get an oil change every single month, and it's gonna cost like three to $500 to get an oil change. So I recommend try to take the truck to the same mechanic every single month for the routine maintenance. What's your question? No, I would be wary of anything I got in the mail if it doesn't look legitimate. I see there's a lot of scams. A lot of people, especially phone calls, especially emails, people try to scam you, but even through the mail, check the website, check the phone number, unless it's directly from the FMCSA or the Federal Department of Transportation, it's more than likely a scam. I, I've seen some some scams that they try to look very legitimate and they try to tell you, you know, you owe this $200 filing fee immediately and it's usually a scam. So I would, do you know who exactly sent you the letter? It says what? Yeah, um, I mean, I would have to look at the document myself, but unless, like I said, unless it's straight from the FMCSA, I would be weary of paying any sort of extra fees because I'm not familiar with that, unless it's specific to your state, but uh, yeah, unless it's coming directly from a government organization, I wouldn't trust it. I, I would call them and, and ask them about it.